nations. Now, you know that. All nations shall worship the Lord. No nation exempted. All nations, they will come before the Lord and worship Him. And you know, God is the, uh, is the, is the author of all nations. So there is nothing going on in any nation that God does not authorize. The Bible says the one that sets up kings and removes kings. However, God is risen right now, his right hand people. In Isaiah, he said, his right hand has gotten him the victory. And the right hand of the Lord is nothing else but intercessions. One man can make a difference. Ezekiel told us, you know, he said, I seek for a man that will stand in the gap. Thank God for Jesus that become, has become our mediator, the mediator of a new covenant. You know, the one that has bridged the gap between us and the Father. But God is still seeking for one man. Prayer is a means by which we convey heaven's will here on earth. And it must not just be a self-centered prayer. You know, uh, the, the Bible says in the last day, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 3, verse 1, it said, men shall be lovers. Or he said in the last days, perilous time shall come. You know, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. That does not mean we don't pray for ourselves, but I'll tell you something. We need to learn to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do you know how many people have died of war? Jesus said, before I come, there shall be war. There will be famine. There will be earthquakes in diverse places. Strange things will begin to happen. And we're having it done right now. I mean, we have uh, things built up. A lot of things are being built up right now. Even in the United States of America, it's time for you and I to begin to pray. And I'll tell you something, when you get involved in things like this, God knows how to reward you. He said, for your heavenly father that seeth you in secret, he shall give you open reward. It's a delight. It's a delight. Now, watch some of the clip of the people that gathered on July 4th celebration here in the United States um, under the um, parasol of G42 Global Reformers. And God bless you, Richard. Oh, it's a key thing, prayer, hallelujah. At this time, I'm gonna call one, Honorable Peter Smith. He's the um, Anne Arundel County District One Councilman. He serves as the first district representative on the Anne Arundel County County Council. Additionally, he served as a resource manager for the Department of Defense, where he managed the United States Marine Corps manpower and budget for the Department of Defense. He has served in the United States Marine Corps for 16 years with 12 years of active duty service and is a captain in the Marine Corps Reserves. And right now, he's going to talk on the topic of making a difference. I'm going to call Honorable Peter Smith to the podium. Thank you. Just want to please be seated. Um, uh, it's interesting because uh, uh, you know that little bio is just a little bit outdated. Um, I can't believe I've been in the Marines as a reservist now for almost 20 years. Believe it or not, I was uh, about four years ago when I was appointed. Uh, but I want to thank Dr. Brown for the, uh, the invitation to be here. Uh, I must admit, uh, there was a scheduling conflict. And so yesterday, some of you all saw me here. Uh, as it was on my calendar for yesterday, for Sunday the 3rd. And, and so I came and I didn't want to leave because uh, when I was raised, uh, when I was young, I was in a choir uh, for almost my entire youth. And so I have to give you credit for having an amazing choir staff and give them their... <laughs> nothing God will do on this planet except first he reveal it to his prophet and God is revealing most of these things that's why this is very very important we're in a critical time right now 
you know, in the last of the last days, when we begin to sit up and begin to take charge and begin to be responsible regarding what God planned to do in our nation, ask of me. I'll give you the anything for thy inheritance. So God is expecting you and I to stand in the gap. I'd like you to think about it, how um, Prophet Daniel stood in the name for, for his nation. You know, Israel uh, was, was in captivity uh, to, the, to the United States of Babylon, I call it. And Daniel said, hey, <laughs> we're serving the covenant keeping God. He understood by the books, what books? The book of Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah. He was reading that book, he must have been reading it. I don't know what you've been reading. You must have been reading also to, to know that March 24, everything Jesus said is almost in fulfillment. And he realized that, hey, we are supposed to be here for 70 years. What are we doing here? This is the 69th year. We're supposed to be in captivity for 70 years. In contrary to the time when they were in Egypt, they were supposed to be in Egypt in captivity for 400 years, but I believe folks are not groaning, folks are not praying, folks are not interceding, and they spend extra years in captivity, another 30 years, 40, 30 years, because God will not do anything on this earth until men raise up and begin to pray. So Daniel, the intercessor, began to pray, and his prayer began with, we have done it. We have been, we, we have, we, we have not, we have not walked in righteousness. We have not fulfilled your law. We have disappointed you. You gave us a little relief. We didn't take advantage of it. Jesus, he began to ask for forgiveness. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Jesus, he began to make that supplication. Began to pray. And his prayer, I'm going to start from there. Begin to move in the life of a man called Cyrus, which according to history, they believe he was a child. Uh, it was a it was a, a child of um, uh, 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 the child of the king of Babylon, you know, Aiseros and Esther. Some people said that, you know, it's not proven. The Bible didn't say anything about it, but some people believe it was a child that uh, Aiseros and Esther both had. That was Cyrus, and the Bible said God steer the spirit of Cyrus. So I know when we begin to pray, God can begin to steer the spirit of our leaders. To begin to do things in conformity with the will of God. If we can pray. Listen to this excerpt. See how people join us. You're going to see some of these people praying. We, we pray together on July 4th. American Independence Day. Regardless of races, of colors, of whatever. You're going to see there. Watch this. And this Thursday, join us for prayer and fasting. Forget about the denomination. Don't let that be. Don't let that disturb you. You, you, you're more enlightened than that. That's a, that's a devil putting the denomination uh, brackets there. Forget about color. Forget about race. Forget about tradition. Forget about religion. I don't believe in this. I don't believe that. Do you believe in the Bible? That's all you need. Do you believe in the Word? That's all you need. Fasting and prayer for the nations. And watch what God will do in your life. My political climate. At this time, I'm going to have. Let's not stand to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Have a seat, please. Thank you. I'm not quite the chief of police yet. <laughs> uh, my name is Lieutenant Stanley. Uh, I am the commander of the Investigative Services Division at the Bowie Police Department. It also encompasses uh, the Community Services Unit and our uh, Criminal Investigation Section. Um, and um, I'm here representing my chief of police, John Nesky. Unfortunately, due to a scheduling conflict, he could not make it, uh, but he sends his warmest regards and uh, wishes he could be here today. Um, I was listening to the councilman earlier. Uh, I'm a member of the Catholic Church, but I grew up Baptist, and I got to tell you, that music, uh, that, that, <laughs> that's enough to bring anybody uh, uh, here to worship uh, any Sunday. So I, I had a fantastic time um, just getting here and people watching and, and listening to the, to the wonderful music. Uh, everybody can sing, I heard, so uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, uh, building a relationship uh, with you guys and um, visiting sometime in the very near, near future. Um, I wanted to sincerely thank uh, Dr. Brown and um, uh, Mrs. Brown, I really appreciate you uh, inviting us here today for this wonderful occasion. Um, and inviting the law enforcement community as a whole, us at the Bowie Police Department. Uh, this is a fine example of strengthening relationships between the faith-based community and local law enforcement. And I must say, I'm quite proud to be a part of that. So thank you very much. Um, 
I just wanted to also mention, um, you know, a lot of times there's a big difference or divide when it comes to the faith-based community and law enforcement. And a lot of times we are exactly the same people. <laughs> uh, some of the people that are sitting in the pews of your churches every Sunday, they are your police officers, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, chiefs. You know, they're the ones worshiping in your pews. They're the ones that are deacons in your church who, who so I love it when I see it. it, it it's in PG County, I, I, uh, Prince George's County, I'm sorry. Prince George's County, I've noticed that that's a very big thing. And I'm glad that in the city of Bowie that we're making that connection and it's happening. Um, I just wanted to touch on some of the political climate going on as it regards to law enforcement. I'm sure most of you are aware of the increased media attention surrounding law enforcement. Uh, the past few years has been tough. Uh, to say the least. Unfortunate, tragic incidents uh, like the ones in Ferguson, Cleveland, New York, 30 miles up the road in Baltimore have shaped uh, the national debate on law enforcement in this country. Uh, and while these incidents deserve intense scrutiny and public debate, I think that the good work that is done by the overwhelming majority of police officers often becomes overlooked. <laughs>